We'll come back. Let's play World Race for the GBA. So, Cormorant Cup is proving too challenging for for Central Challenge veteran Muscle Tone, unfortunately. This is seemingly being that Muscle Tone isn't actually accustomed to racing in the slightest. But this will save us some time this way. Absolutely crushing. Vesuvius, Cormorant Coop with this car instead. This car that can actually turn. Despite being the worst at turning of all the Elite Razors, of course. Alright. But it will be one way to make up for the time we lost last episode by failing this. Having a quicker attempt that we can finish with a faster car. These turns are pretty straightforward here. With this car. Despite it not actually having good handling by its class standards. Oops. Whereas that turn or your cut. Hey, what are you doing? Okay, this is not how time trials work. I'm supposed to have to beat like a single specific time here. What? What do you have in there? Okay, good job paying this boost. Yeah, the Cormac Coop is not capable of driving this fast. Something is not right here. Things are a little warped, but yeah, that turn. It's one big right turn for a really long time. And for really and for rookie cars like muscle tone, that's really, really tough to deal with. There we go. Yeah, though, so that's a little suspicious. Cormac Coop was not holding back to that degree, so something's a little strange about being around Slingshot, apparently. Interesting. That aside, Cormac Coop, awesome. Wait, we didn't even need Cormac Coop yet, whatever. <laughs> Whoops. Did that a little bit out of order. I guess we'll just have to skip the time trial after we finish this league, this next league. Scorch errors. Also tone in any case, so it actually has the work. Actually, has somehow I didn't notice it has bad handling even by rookie standards, which is a horrible thing to imagine. I beat. Mm -hmm. Power of the Ancients. I guess this gives some small degree of explanation for. The tokens and things like that, but for some reason, just just seem to define the very concept of power in these universes, these various universes that we're in. All right, though. So, one well, thing about the note about the music, actually. So, I was that has been brought to my attention that the menu theme in this game is actually the one of the track themes from the console version, all about, of course, Albite, kind of Game Boyified. But interestingly, I ended up deciding to do that. But I also then, shortly after, noticed that the game does, in fact, use that same song for one of the actual tracks, too, in this game, too. It's interesting. I was watching the videos back, and somehow I didn't notice this from playing, but. You're just playing the game and you hear the menu theme when you're in the menu and then all of a sudden the screen fades to black to load the track and then when it loads back up it's the same song again in the race. A little bit of a strange design choice, I feel like. At least this track isn't too bad for rookie cars. Oh, still, you can mess up the strangest things though. What? That looked fine. Yeah, long jumps are a little weird.
So I don't know how I managed to fall through that one time. I certainly phased through solid ground. I haven't seen phasing through solid things in a while now I think about it. Alright. These power ups aren't very helpful when there's nobody around me to use them on. Come on, man. I don't really want to use saucers when I play as a rookie, to be honest, because it would take her if I mess up the saucer in the slightest, even if I actually get points for it. I feel like the possibility or the penalty of messing up a little bit would be pretty great in terms of losing control and steering, because these things take forever to get to get a hold of again. Anyways. What's the next? Forest. Mm -hmm. Just some little factoids for the audience, I guess. I'm trying to think of what to make of these. Uh, I'm not sure there's much that feels easy to actually incorporate. Aside from just being like little side lore some sort. Ah, that was probably a pretty good place to put that, actually. This is just a cruel turn for what you'd have to go through. Come on. Uh, I have a serious penchant for going straight between power-ups and boost paths when both are presented to me. I tend to take the third option of using neither for some reason. It would be a lot better to put that right off the jump, actually. Not nothing before. Maybe. Whatever. Okay. I love how the boost still lasts for a good while on these cars. It's not like in Star Trek Challenge where with the less impressive cars you have very little boost to work with, like with Ballistic, for instance. Which I don't normally mind. But in this game, where with the weaker cars, your boost is the one thing that really lets you actually have a decent amount of control over your car, I would hate to not be able to boost for long periods of time and all that. That's how I recover from turns going badly. It's how I maintain control in turns as well, like this you can't lose control for some reason while boosting. The downforce explanation doesn't work here. Mustone has no spoiler. Or anything of that sort. Yet again, not really a car made for racing. But still very stunty. Hey! Jeez! That looked nice at the beginning. Just really part of the track missing. Okay. A little bit of distortion going on. I'm paired with the distortion we see at the beginning of each track, actually. The visual stuff, that's a little concerning. We haven't seen that sort of thing in quite a long time. I thought it kind of gone away from that, but hey, it means potential sign that that may be coming. We may have succeeded in attracting its attention. I think I just has one piece of item for this one. He usually has more than that. Alright, so nice level place. A place that we're apparently accustomed to the decor of, considering the theme of our own theme here. Alright. I'll get used to controlling these cars someday, maybe. Although I'm still spending the majority of my time not controlling the working cars. Since not only are the working cars only one-third of the playable cars, but 
they're also a good deal less than one third of the braces. Well, maybe like one fourth exactly or something like that. Since they have fewer races in their own leagues. I think it would be exactly one fourth of the races by number. It'd be nice to use that plus sign actually. I wish I'd been seeing more of those. I don't know why they haven't been popping up ever in this league. It would be nice to be able to just sit back and not have to worry about steering for a little bit with this kind of car. I don't know if you consider that more powerful weapon or not. I mean, if you have a lot of boost and you get that and you know which stretch of track to use it on, which does rely on a variety of skill based factors and whatnot. But if those things align, it does make it a good portion of the track pretty easy for you. Easy and quick. Where you don't actually have to do anything. I just hold the boost button. Because that'd be why they make it more rare or something. Chase! Bo okay, boost is usually supposed to make you go straight forward. Apparently, using the negative sign boost actually changes that. The mechanics makes it ever so slightly different. You really can't say I've ever seen as much nuance in a GBA racing game. Alright, we're about done here. This should be the last race now, I think. Well, wait, it's the second or third race. This is the third race, isn't it? I think, maybe. I think so. Memory is one thing, but I sometimes do, but not always. Oh man, I, don't, I was like halfway to lapping those guys. Yeah, there we go. Three races. Yay. And no more acknowledgement, but... Oops, up there. I already did that this episode. So I'll see you guys next time, next episode, play World Race to the GBA, where... I didn't delete again, but now... With Carmel Coop on our side. An experienced, if not centric challenge veteran racer. We'll head on into. Well, this. See you guys.